Hi, my name's Nate Fulmer, and today I want to teach you a little something about gravity assists. All right, so if we're going to talk about gravity assists, the first question we have to ask ourselves is, what the heck do we mean by gravity assists? Well, in simple terms, it's when a orbiting body, like a satellite, will utilize the gravity of a planet or a larger object around in space and use that pull, that orbital motion from the planet to slingshot itself around to a further trajectory. It is slingshot, sometimes we call it a, a gravity slingshot. It's sort of that same idea. So we're utilizing this relative motion and the gravity of a planet in order to alter the path of this spacecraft or change its speed. And the reasons that we do this is, is really economic. Instead of just trying to take a beeline from Earth to say Pluto or Jupiter or something like that, we could save on propellant and certainly time and definitely expense by utilizing gravity assists. It's just far more economic of an option. So, how does it work? Uh, I was talking about using relative speeds and using gravity, and it kind of comes down to this, that the spacecraft is going to accelerate towards a planet. It's going to be brought in and accelerate towards it because of the gravitational pull. But not only that, but remember that the planet's not stationary, it's, it's orbiting the sun. So as it gets near it, it's also getting pulled along on the planet's own orbital path. And if it's moving with this, if it's moving with the orbiting planet, then that planet can give it a sort of push as it slingshots around. And you can see from the diagram here that if it follows in the same direction, if it's moving with the planet, then it gains speed. If it's trying to slingshot around the front and come around, then it'll lose speed. And sometimes that's exactly what you want. You want to slow it down as it comes in. Uh, the reason that this works is all has to do with conservation of angular momentum. So you might remember from your own physics class that angular momentum we usually define as mass times velocity times the distance from the orbiting, well, from whatever you're orbiting. And that has to remain consistent. So obviously mass is probably not going to change, but you'll have this exchange between velocity and radius as you come in and approach a planet and as you leave. And so that's one of the things that has to be maintained throughout the orbit of a planet around the sun or a satellite around the planet. Now, if you're looking from the point of view of the planet itself, we're using that as a reference point, then the spacecraft is gonna enter and leave at about the same speed, at exactly the same speed, it has to. So you see this little green ball come in and zips around. Let's see if we can watch that. Again, there it comes, it speeds up and then slows down as it exits. So you can see as it comes in, it is picking up speed. There it is, it's picking up speed, reaches its fastest point right there, and then gets further and further away and slows down as well. All right, that's all conservation of angular momentum. You're gonna have a close radius, you're gonna have a quick speed, a large speed. If you're gonna have a large radius, you have a small speed. Oh, this even exchange. Great, but now let's break in that relative motion of the planet because it's not standing still. So let's say the planet's moving at some um, velocity u and our satellite is coming in at velocity v. So it's gonna slingshot around. So from the stationary observer, say someone who's hanging out at the sun and watching all this happen, it's gonna see the planet moving at speed u and the satellite approaching the planet at speed and but from the frame of reference of the planet it's going to see it with a, a relative velocity that is the, its own speed the speed u plus the velocity of the satellite so that's what you're looking to think about if you're um, you're watching cars come by as you're driving along the road the oncoming traffic looks like it's coming at you at a much larger speed than if you're standing on the side of the road and watching traffic go by. It's, it's the exact same concept, relative velocity. So from this, like we talked about before, conservation of angular momentum, from the frame of reference of the planet, it still sees 
the satellite leave its trajectory as it comes along the back end, it sees it leave again at that same velocity, u plus v, that we had before. Now, obviously, in the opposite direction. It's the bottom rung now uh, that we see in the picture. But from a stationary observer, say the, our observer at the sun, who's watching this whole thing happen, right? we don't have that same perspective. And so what it's going to see is the satellite leave the planet at 2u plus v, right? It's got that relative velocity plus the velocity of the planet. So if the satellite's leaving the planet at a relative velocity of u plus v, and the planet itself is moving at u, then the velocity of the spacecraft is 2u plus v. Hopefully that math makes sense. But of course, even though you're getting all this extra speed, it doesn't come for free. Because lest we forget, there is still conservation of energy that's got to come from somewhere. Where could that source of energy be? Well, as it turns out, the source of energy is from the planet itself. It is stealing energy from the planet, in a way. Now, good news, the planet is enormous and the satellite itself is minuscule by comparison, so the planet doesn't care. It doesn't it doesn't mind that it's losing this energy. You would never notice. You could launch out and use this sort of technique a million times over and you would not alter the course of the planet. So great is the relative difference. So I want to show you this little animatic. This is uh, the Juno mission for Jupiter, where we sent out the satellite to go and observe Jupiter and we utilized this technique of gravity assists. So here we go. It leaves, Juno leaves Earth and it's traveling around and it comes along and it's getting pretty far out. Ultimately, remember, its goal is to get to Jupiter and somewhere about here is as far as it gets out and it slows down and just from the sun's gravity is gonna start getting pulled back towards. Now, here's where it gets really clever is it was launched at the exact right time with the right, exact right speeds and such that it comes and gravity is just past Earth. Earth gives it that extra boost that it needs to get far, far out all the way eventually to Jupiter. Now you can see it's slowing down the sun's gravity, it's trying to pull it back. But if they did these calculations correctly, then it should all work out. That slingshot effect should be just enough that as Jupiter comes reeling in, they will meet together. So it was a really great utilization of gravity assist to help save on propellant, save on time, save on expense in an effort to get our satellite out to Jupiter. So hopefully you learned a little something about gravity assists. Thank you for listening. I'm Nate Fulmer, and I will catch you later.